So um, I think some people are aware on here that I've got a bit of a penchant. I've got a bit of a liking for the old Nike trainer. Um, famously designed by Tinker Hatfield, one of the most uh, legendary sneaker designers that ever existed, responsible for some of my favorite shoes, more importantly, the Jordan 4, right? He goes down in history just for designing that shoe alone. But another one of these shoes that he's kind of been involved in in some way, shape or form was the Air Trainer 1, and especially in this kind of original chlorophyll colorway. One of my favorites, one of my favorites. Um, It's a weird shoe, right? Because it's not necessarily the most, um, sh it's not the shoe that's most coveted by the hype beast or by the resellers, but it does have a lot of love with with um, avid sneaker heads like myself, I'd say people that are fans of trainers. I won't say I'm a sneaker head, just a seven fan of trainers, right? And who have kind of a history of buying shoes over the years. We know what the value, we know kind of the beauty of an air trainer one. And for me, actually going forward, um, or kind of, you know, especially in this era, I've seen myself looking at air trainer ones more just as an alternative to wearing like a Nike Metcon when I go to the gym. Because of course, when these shoes were launched in the early eighties, they were kind of essentially kind of spearheading the cross training movement that was happening at the time. The ability to kind of go in the gym and you just do weightlift, you just run. Uh, that was sort of like a whole new idea. There wasn't like separate running shoes and stuff that sort of kind of meld these sort of ideas into one shoe. And it worked really well. And of course, this shoe went on to kind of influence other tennis shoes like the, you know, the tech challenge and all these or of other bits and bobs but it was a really really influential shoe and i think nowadays especially that mm, some of the metcons have kind of um gone towards a sort of um non-linear really thin uh fly wire-ish kind of construction i'm not necessarily a fan of those and considering how fat my feet are i kind of need something a little bit um uh a little bit more a little bit with a little bit more cushioning something a little bit more prominent around my feet something that can really hug and grip my feet and sort of ground them when i'm kind of doing my power cleans and my deadlifts and my squats when i'm in the gym and then i remembered oh yeah do you remember all those old school um magazine scans from japan or magazine scams from you know magazine scams magazine scans of nike shoes and back in the day you'd see these really amazing adverts of people in the gym lifting weights playing basketball they'd be wearing these sort of cross training shoes and reminding me of kind of trying to go back to that sort of period instead of accepting the inevitability of gym out attire at the moment which is mm -hmm. like really thin trainers and really skin tight um clothing like the stuff that gymshark do right that's really kind of skin tight and kind of grips around your biceps and stuff i kind of want to return to the old school way where you'd wear like a sweatshirt you know and you cut off the sleeves you turn it into a t-shirt sort of thing maybe cut the bit here in the middle some big jersey trousers some big kind of jersey shorts or maybe some swim trunks that you'd wear sometimes depending if you're running but a bit more of a looser athletic colligate sort of feel right um something that you might see a kid wearing you know in some of the pictures on blue eye is it ivy yeah ivy you remember that um get ivy that that kind of massive book where it's sort of like this um, amazing japanese photographer went to all these ivy league colleges and took pictures of everyone's stylish looks back in i don't know let's say the 60s 70s maybe that's kind of look that i'm thinking of going for and luckily nike decided to re um uh to retro re retro do you go re retro or to bring back the air trainer one chlorophyll for an sb interesting update so i guess nike sb have got this new orange well, they've got this new orange tab thing that they're doing now, which I'm guessing they're taking kind of uh, staple pieces from in the Nike archives and give them a bit of a Nike SB treatment. So I'm interested to see what the updates are on the SB version of this is this, because I'm pretty sure on the normal chlorophylls, it doesn't have this sort of mesh back on the heel. It's usually leather, so that might be a little bit of an update. And maybe the tongue has been fattened up a bit and maybe they've kind of updated the, mids, the, the insole. But for the most part, I wouldn't necessarily think they were the best shoe to skate in. But let's continue this article from Sneaker Freak. I said the following. Um, it can yeah the air trainer one chlorophyll og returns in sb form it says good news everyone the classic air one trainer in his og chlorophyll colorway is returning very very yeah. soon old heads and new jacks will rejoice old heads that's me uh i like for this long overdue retro which was last seen in 2012 yeah true it's been a while isn't it I've, I've been intermittently checking on ebay every so often for my pair to come up but again this sim this is a similar to like a mars yard in that it's very popular but it's also gets worn so it's very hard to find your pair brand new um because people wear them they they actually wear them to death and they're most of the ones i've seen online were really really worn to you know close to death so it does say a lot about the reception or the kind of you know adoration this shoe gets from some heads 
Um, however, there is a twist this time. We have re- um, it's been reworked under the SB umbrella, as you'll soon find out. It's not a bad thing. While the A Trainer One began life as a cross trainer in 1987, its effective um, versatility was soon proven um, when um, Hotshot John McEnroe wore them and smashed the competition on the tennis court. And when the strapping mid court entered the retro cycle in 2000s, it eventually became a skate favorite because of its beefy upper and grippy head and grippy tread. Grippy head. Grippy head. Sorry, grippy tread. <laughs> so it's no surprise that the chlorophyll um, has been reissued as a nike sb trainer the og makeup of the gray and suede with the white leather joined with the chlorophyll green assets makes for a super easy to wear sneaker that'll look as good on the grip tape as it does on the pavement also if it's true to spec details like the elasticated tongue the gusset oh that's a pretty good idea that makes it really um friendly for skaters and um, firm yet responsive air sole and the four foot strap will please both skaters and sneakers are like yeah that's true I've, I, i'm not too sure about a four foot strap when you're skating usually this is the kind of the ollie sectional or the section that sort of rubs up against a grip tape when you're doing any kind of tricks on your skateboard so i would assume maybe this sort of function wouldn't be the best but then maybe this is sort of used to maybe grip down your foot i know for myself as a, in being you know an, an avid gym goer maybe the ability to sort of have this strap on your forefoot does help to sort of grind your feet you see a lot in weightlifting shoes that might be a thing but i'm just happy they're back i don't really care why they brought them back i'm just happy they're back so when are they releasing october 3rd um i've already got a pair so in case you're wondering they're on their way i should do a review actually when i get them so make sure you keep an eye out for that some additional pictures here from attitude like they're just so beautiful man such a classic classic colorway like the color blocking is impeccable the shape of it is just perfect and it's just interesting too because this shoe came out in 1987 and you can honestly say there are many many shoes out there especially from designer brands because they have a tendency to do this right designer fashion brands sometimes get annoying in that respect where they don't necessarily um you know come up with original designs they just take from the archives of other brands and sort of like you know mash them together into one thing um case in point the triple s that i have right it's essentially got three soles at the bottom but for the most part you can see how much of a class of design is because you can tell some of the shoes that you see nowadays have sort of taken elements from the um the nike air trainer one and remember this was made in 1987 so imagine how mad this must have looked at that time when it's come out um so yeah i can't wait to get a hold of that so when that comes in my hands whoosh, again I'm, I'm saying some really suspect things today in this podcast isn't it? when that comes in my hands when i get them in my hands i will definitely let you know and make a video so definitely keep an eye out for that one um i'll try and make it as entertaining as i can because some of the review sneaker people on here are, are garbage mate absolute garbage the same old nonsense standing behind old box so box of shoes like hey guys what's good it's like no i'm not bad at life so i'll try and do it my own way and try and make it as informative as i can but yeah keep an eye out for that really 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 great shoe 